action. If this is some cottage... But perhaps most crucially, New Zealand offers filmmakers something money can't buy, talent. It was Weta Digital's groundbreaking work on Gollum which made Cameron sit up and take notice. It's Bilbo Baggins. Baggins. In fact, that was the inspiration for me to, to dust off Avatar that I had written 10 years earlier and was unable to make until the technology sort of sort of caught up with, with you know, the ambitions of the story. When I saw what, what he had done with Gollum, I said, well, we can make Avatar. That's pretty amazing. So Peter Jackson and Weta Digital can take some of the credit of, of Avatar and the massive success that that film ended up being. Oh, I think so, yes, absolutely. I, you know, if you, if you think about the way it works is that, is that some, some, sometimes somebody will just sort of grab the flag and just charge out ahead and make some crazy strides, a quantum leap beyond. And, you know, I had done it earlier on a, on a couple of films, but I was waiting for, for certain breakthroughs in technology that I could see demonstrably out there. And Peter was the one that did it. He's the one that led the charge on the facial performance capture. The movie industry that Jackson created is now a decade old, and nowhere has enjoyed the spin-offs more than his own backyard of Miramar. The eastern Wellington suburb has traded its manufacturing base for creative industry, and along the way enjoyed a 200% increase in house prices. Suddenly we woke up one morning and there was people living around us who we discovered were, were film stars, you know, and Ironically, uh, initially it was a big, it was a really big thing, and Peter Jackson had become a really big, a big name too. And, but he would still wander down the main street to see turn shops in his in his jandals and sign autographs for kids, and it was all very, very much a, sort of a culture shock for Wellington. At the heart of Miramar, the Roxy Cinema, recently reopened and still blushing from its seven million dollar facelift. It was the logical place to, to recreate a cinema of this style and this, this amount of glamour and recreate that experience of film going because it's natural that we've got people who are film enthusiasts that live and work here. It is quite amazing how this, this little pocket of Wellington has been completely transformed mm. by this industry. I think the most tangible results are um, the quality of the restaurants and cafeterias has gotten a lot better. You know the cafes, it's, um, the food's fantastic, the coffee's great and there's a cinema there now which is um, a direct result of the film industry being here and the success we've had so I mean it is great to be able to return something to the suburb that supported us so well. Do you ever get a chance to actually enjoy that to go and have a coffee or eat a sandwich yeah, or yeah, sit in a no, cinema? No, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what do people say to you? Do they come and have a chat? Do they want to? Uh, some people do, yeah. I mean, they usually want to take a photo on their iPhone. <laughs> These days, I think meeting meeting somebody um, uh, is, is, is mainly about taking the photo so you can put it on your Facebook page. That seems to be the ultimate uh, attraction. The business of filmmaking is Jackson's life. He's a workaholic who keeps a gruelling schedule. I remember you saying to me once, um, I never finish a film, I abandon it. And well, no, I don't, no, no, I don't abandon. I don't abandon movies. I never finish them. They get taken away from me. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody, a man in a, a man in dark glasses and in a trench coat comes and rips them out of your hand. He says, "That's enough." And that's enough. You're no not working time. on this anymore. You're done. <laughs> that must be hard. That must it's be it's it it's up. it's hard, and then the, 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 a few minutes later, it's a relief because it's ah, oh, we're done. <laughs> But luring directors like James Cameron to our side of the world may mean Peter Jackson can finally take a break. Hopefully it means I get to have a vacation every now and again. He, he, can, keep, he can keep the studios and Weta busy for a while and I'll, I'll take a year or two off. It'll be fantastic. Right, so that's the kind of secret plan. That you bring in more of the big directors and you get more time off. Absolutely. Cameron is writing Avatar 2 and 3 on the Wairarapa farm he now calls home with his wife and five children. He's so enchanted with his Kiwi experience, he's applied for residency. Are you and your family able to have a little bit more anonymity here than maybe you'd have in the States? Well, I don't. I wouldn't say anonymity. I think everybody sort of knows, you know, kind of who we are. But they're very respectful of of privacy and of boundaries, you know. And and also they don't, they don't really care. When you're out in a farm community, they don't care who you are. You have to be able to, you know, you have to be able to drive a quad, drive a tractor. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? What's that Titanic thing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If you can't muster sheep, it doesn't matter how many Oscars you've got. You know. <laughs> Cameron says he wants to make all his movies here. Jackson's not going anywhere either.
I used to get offers. No one bothers anymore. <laughs> I mean, I literally, no one's asked me to go make a movie anywhere else for probably 10 or 15 years. Really? I mean, I, I, I had offers after, uh, you know, uh, Brain Dead and, and, and Heavenly Creatures and the Frighteners time. Around that period of time in the mid-90s, I was getting offers to do different movies overseas. But, um, you know, I always had a, a film I wanted to make here that I wanted to do more than the Lear movie. Over Christmas, Jackson took a rare break in the UK with his family. But even on holiday, Tolkien is never far from his mind. I did something there that I had always wanted to do. Is, um, we went to uh, Ox Oxford, which is the town where Tolkien was a professor. And Tolkien always used to drink at a pub called the Eagle and Child in Oxford. So I, um, Fran and I went there um, during our holiday and we had a pint to his health in the Eagle and Child, which, which was cool. How many years in total will you be on this, on these three films for? Uh, probably six years, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That's a fair chunk of your yeah, life. It is. Yeah. 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 And plus the seven on Lord of the Rings. Tolkien is, Tolkien's consumed quite a bit of my life. Yeah. <laughs> but you wouldn't have it any I other way. I wouldn't have it any other way. No. No. <laughs> We've got to keep looking. It's mm -hmm. sort of sooner it's rather later, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, when I, if, when I'm sitting in the car driving to the studio shooting a movie and I'm kind of tired or you know I know this day is going to be difficult for whatever reason and, and I'm feeling a little bit stressed I just say to myself hey hang on is there anything you would rather be doing right this moment is there anything you would rather be doing and the answer is always no I'm doing exactly what I want to do.